Hi, I'm Lou Perosi. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about how to work with plaster and how it relates to safety concerns. Okay, plaster is a fantastic material to work with. Um, this is $5. It's, it's really cheap. It's easy to work with. Um, and the neatest thing about it is that it goes from a powder, you add water, it goes into a liquid, and then becomes a solid. And it becomes a really great material for carving. So we're going to kind of get into all of that. But again, this episode is really going to be talking about safety. If uh, any episode you do not skip, it is this episode, okay? Because I'm going to give you um, all the, tick, the, the tricks and tips that I've learned over the last 30 years for uh, casting plaster, okay? Again, so students, do not fast forward, okay? Because I've, I've got a lot, uh, I don't want you to damage anything, okay? It's a great material, but it definitely has some problems. So the first thing we want to talk about when working with plaster is, um, probably the most important thing is do not, all right? Do not put plaster down the drain. Okay, not in its liquid state, not in its solid state, not in its powder state. If you end up doing that, you're more than likely going to clog your drains and you'll have a plumber come over and have to fix it. And that's a very expensive uh, repair. Okay, trust me, it's happened. Um, the second thing I want to talk to you about is having a dedicated time in which you're going to mix your plaster, which means don't plan on talking to anybody during that time. Don't plan on answering a cell phone during that time. Um, really put specific time aside for doing this. Because what can easily happen, which has happened, is I've seen it where students go ahead and they'll be in the middle of casting, their phone rings, they'll grab their phone, they'll talk for a few minutes, and then the next thing you know, uh, the plaster is like a rock and they didn't get a good chance to mix it up and get it a good consistency. So again, shut your cell phones off and uh, make sure that you dedicate that specific time for mixing up plaster. The third thing we should talk about is rubber gloves. You do want to wear rubber gloves when you're casting or working with plaster in general. Um, one of the things that I've noticed over the years is that people with usually uh, you know, more sensitive skin, people with eczema, eczema uh, tend to get a little bit of a rash from plaster. Uh, even me, who doesn't have any kind of skin allergies or anything, usually what happens if I get plaster on my skin and it's, it's left to sit, even for a little bit, usually the next day or the next couple of days, uh, I can get a little bit of an itchy, kind of rashy thing. So again, it's just a good idea to wear rubber gloves while working with plaster. You'll also want to get yourself a sponge or have a wet rag ready just in case you do splash any plaster uh, on any surfaces. Because remember, in a few minutes to a half hour, that's going to turn to a solid and it's going to be much more difficult to, uh, to clean it up. So you want to just make sure that you go ahead and you do that. Okay. Um, another thing you're going to want to think about is uh, it's a good idea to have some newspaper. And what I like to do is I put newspaper all over my work surface and I also put it on the floor, but I usually will put masking tape down around it. Um, that way I don't slip on the newspaper. But what this does is again, if there's any kind of splashing of the plaster on, uh, any kind of splashing of the plaster, you can easily just throw this out, okay? Um, and then you don't have to worry about it. Again, we won't have to use our sponge or a towel, which may likely get ruined in the process. Not necessarily, but it is something to be thinking about. The fifth thing we want to talk about is a respirator. Respirator, is, you, you will be wanting to wear it throughout the process, um, especially with mixing. When you begin to mix plaster, that powder, there gets some dust is created. The last thing you want to be doing is inhaling that. Now, in my particular case, I have an N95 mask. N95s are the best for this. Um, however, they're really difficult to get right now. In fact, they're impossible to get right now. So your regular cloth masks should work out pretty well. Um, but in the future, when things get a little bit easier, this is the mask for you. Again, when you put these, you want both of these bands on. This 
part under the lower part of the neck, this on the topper part of the neck, and there's a little bit of a metal ring there. You wanna just clamp that around your nose so you get really full coverage. One thing you can do is if you are, I'm working in the kitchen, right? Uh, you can use the vent here. That'll help pull some of that plaster uh, dust. Uh, but we're gonna try to keep dust to a minimum. So I'm gonna teach you in the next videos of how to go about doing that. Um, I'm gonna do an interesting thing. My casting, I kinda like the milk crate shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and cast that. You'll see that in the next video. Um, and what I like about this is I'll cut the top off with a box cutter and it's got a nice line surface in it, but it's got this really beautiful rectangular shape that's gonna, I think it's gonna be really nice for carving. But again, any shape can work out pretty well. I like this too because it's disposable, it's cheap, it's easy. I think all of my costs here are hardly anything. Um, but one of the things that I will do is once I cut this top off and I prepare this container um, to be casted in, I'm gonna put it in this. This is like a little spill container is what I call it. What is it really? It's like a, a spinach container that I got from the grocery store. Uh, I did test it. I filled it up with water. I made sure that it didn't have any leaks. So if this has a leak and it starts springing a leak, it's just simply gonna go into my spill container. And that's gonna make that really nice and one less thing that I have to worry about. Um, so we'll just go ahead and put these guys off to the side. Now, um, this is pretty important, especially how it relates uh, to what we're doing. No one should be casting their face in plaster or casting their hands in plaster. There's other materials that work much better. And you also have to remember that plaster actually heats up and it, gets, it can be pretty hot to the touch. And the last thing you wanna do is have this thing sitting on your face and it's just heating up and you're burning your skin. Um, the other thing is you don't know uh, if you inhale plaster into your nasal passages, uh, what might happen there? You might need to have surgery. I've heard that actually has happened. So again, there's much better materials uh, for that. Uh, certainly with more experience, um, as you work with plaster and become more familiar, there's other things to your options. But again, avoid those two for now, probably permanently. The last safety feature I think I would like to, you guys to be thinking about is um, wearing eye protection. You don't want to get plaster to sort of uh, fall into your eye. That can be really problematic. Um, so wear safety protection. That's a good choice. You got your rubber gloves, you got your respirator, and you got your eye protection. In my case, when I'm going to be doing my castings, I'll simply be wearing my glasses, and that should give me some pretty good coverage. Um, if at all you have a friend that wants to be there just in case anything goes wrong, I usually, uh, during class, like to have people work in pairs just in case. I mean, you just never know. You spring a leak and the next thing you know, it's this whole thing's a total disaster, right? So uh, just have somebody waiting in the wings. Um, but that probably pretty much covers all of our safety Features, you'll hear me go over a couple more as uh, we begin the process of casting. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video, and uh, we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks.